Hey, my name is Karim El Gaish. I am the pit master and owner of KG Barbecue here in Austin, Texas, and we do an Egyptian fusion on Texas barbecue. I came on a visit to Austin in 2012 for just a weekend, actually, and I tried barbecue and my life has never been the same. Since the first bite of brisket just changed my whole life. And I just, you know, I tried barbecue here and I went back to Cairo, went back to my day job, and I just could not stop thinking about specifically brisket because it was fascinating to me how they transformed this cheaper, undesirable cut into an extremely succulent product with just salt, pepper, and a, f a fire, you know? It's, a, it's amazing to me. So I went on a quest back home in Cairo to recreate barbecue. I smoked whatever any butcher would claim to be a brisket in Cairo, because <laughs> that was the most challenging part, is to actually find a butcher that knows what they're doing to cut a brisket the way it's supposed to be cut. I used to work in corporate finance in Cairo, graduated business university, and worked in corporate banks for about five years. And it really haunted me that I, I want to switch my career and cook for a living because I had so much passion for cooking. In 2015, I took a month off of my job and I came here to see if someone will teach me. So I had one month here and I would go out every morning to barbecue joints and tell them my story and be like, will you teach me, you know? And I was faced with almost 100% rejection because it's very competitive, you know? It's 2015 and uh, a lot of like, everything was rising. There was a lot of competition coming up and uh, you don't want someone to just come in and learn your secrets and leave, you know? So finally, Curlin Barbecue said yes, that he will teach me uh, at the point where I offered my free labor, you know? <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, at this point, I was, I just wanted to train. I just wanted to learn how to cook barbecue. So Bill from Curlin Barbecue, he told me that he is willing to teach me. And then I finally got over all of my family and friends, like talking down to me not to quit my job. And I decided to do it. And I moved here to uh, learn how to cook barbecue and take it back to Cairo initially. And then I just fell in love with Austin. I fell in love with the city. I loved the people. So I decided to stay here. And then throughout this whole process, I started introducing my own flavors through pop-ups, private events, and cooking classes. And that's when I took this time to develop the KG Barbecues menu. I did pop-ups around the city, and it started getting popular and popular every time I did them, and then we sold out every time. And that's when I took the time to introduce new dishes and see what, what, what works and what doesn't work. And then we finally came up with this menu that you see right here, this menu has been filtered through a lot of pop-ups, a lot of events, and this is really the best and the best of what we have to offer. And I finally, I'm bringing my own flavors of my own country, and I love doing this so much. Uh, I love sharing the, the food and the culture, and you'll see in a lot of our events and our branding, we share a lot of Egyptian cultural uh, themes and music and art. We keep doing specials and we keep rotating things around the menu. I want to always have something new for our regulars. We have a lot of regulars now, which is beautiful. We have people that show up like three times a week. Yeah, for our rice bowl. Yeah. Our rice bowl is our most popular dish by far. That's what I recommend for everybody to try. It's a beautiful dish of a combination of flavors and textures. It's been described by a customer before as a party in your mouth. And it's been de described as a life-changing dish before. <laughs> But people really come back for it. Yeah. So now when you're having regulars all the time, giving you compliments, what, what does that mean to you? Oh, it means the world. It means the world to me. You know, seeing, uh, one of my biggest rewards is seeing a smile on somebody's face when they, when they eat the food or when they try the food. I do this thing where I like, I hand out food to somebody and I just kind of watch, watch their reaction, you know? <laughs> So this is extremely rewarding for me. And then when people come back, no, it means it means the world. To me, honestly, great barbecue from good barbecue is about the love and about the patience and the effort that you're willing to put into this and how much you care about this, you know, because it is extremely time consuming. It can be extremely draining at the end of the night. You're, you just want to go home, but the briskets are not done yet. So you have you have to wait, you have to be patient. It's an easy business to, for people to skimp on and serve something mediocre, but we live in a city where if you do that, you will not survive here. Yeah.
Two of our most special meats are the pomegranate glazed pork ribs and our lamb bacon ribs. We do everything here Texas style barbecue, but we use Middle Eastern flavors and spices. So we do a dry rub on our rack of pork ribs, uh, but we do oregano, coriander, fenugreek, and then we glaze it in our barbecue sauce, which is made with pomegranate juice and pomegranate molasses. So it looks and feels like a classic rib, but when you bite into it, it's an extreme surprise of, of flavors and a little bit of sweet, a little bit of tart. It's just like how we're used to it, but just like takes you some, somewhere way, way different. And then our lamb bacon ribs, it's a beautiful cut. It's super fatty, has a lot of belly fat on it. It's just like a small little bone of lamb smoke goodness. You know, it's just like fall off the bone fatty lamb. So this is also one of my favorite cuts. Our desserts are great. Uh, we have uh, omali, which is the uh, Egyptian style bread pudding that's cooked on the smoker. And it's, I've described it like this before and other people have. It was really nice to hear that from other people. This dessert is like a warm hug. You know, it's like getting wrapped in a warm blanket. It is made with puff pastry. So it's really buttery. And then we put hazelnuts and cinnamon and vanilla and coconut raisins. And then uh, it's all smoked. So it's just like warm, it's a little, it's, it's not too sweet, but it has all these almost holiday flavors to it, but it's extremely comforting. I'm really excited to introduce new dishes, but now, you know, since like, since we opened, I was thinking that we're gonna take some time to like level out a little bit and relax a little bit, but it's not, it's not. We're like, as soon as we open, it's like someone came in and stepped on the gas, you know, full throttle. So we're really just trying to keep up with our operations and our regular menu. We introduce specials here and there, but our main goal right now is to standardize the operations and have enough people to do our prep and just knock out this menu without feeling like we're just trying to keep up all the time. It's, it's, it's just, it requires a certain type of person to cook barbecue. I love two things about barbecue and that's really what drew me to it is the simplicity you're using minimal ingredients and cooking over a live fire. And the fact that you use undesirable cuts, you know, and you're transforming the cuts that people don't really want. You know, people go for the tender cuts and the steaks and the grilling, but then you got these beautiful cuts that are way cheaper. And you, if you know what you're doing with them, you can create much better products than the more expensive cuts. So seeing that, you know, it's a dry cooking environment too. You're not braising, you're not using a lot of sauces and stuff. So just seeing how these cheaper cuts are transformed that way and becoming so juicy with crispy bark and smoky and tender, it's, a, it's an amazing craft, yeah. Uh, we use um, offset smoker here. We have a 1000 gallon propane tank smoker. We use post oak wood uh, as our main source of fire. Uh, we sometimes use charcoal in the beginning of the week to start the fire, but then every day we just use the little bit of charcoal left in the fire to restart the fire the next morning. Post oak is Texas's blessing, is one of Texas's blessings. I love post oak, it's a, it's a really mild, uh, reliable wood to work with. Wood can be really challenging to work with, uh, especially with consistency of getting the right size logs and getting the right seasoning, the right aging on the wood. Uh, and that's why I, I really love working with Javier at Chief Firewood. The fact that they're so reliable. If I'm in a hurry, I can ask for wood and it's here the next morning. And the consistency of the size of the logs and of the aging. Uh, I, I love that he just has a nice balance all the way throughout, but then but throughout the whole cage, you'll see a little bit of dry wood, which is very helpful to start a fire or, or to get a fire hot. And then you get a little bit of denser logs, which is nice to have burn down slower and give you more charcoal. Chief Firewood has helped us in their presence here. They have accommodated all of our growth instantly. You know, I, we doubled almost in the first month. From every delivery, we, it was doubled. We got one cage, and then we got two cages, and then we got four cages uh, in, in a matter of less than two months. And you know, they accommodated all of our needs, and it's just consistent quality, and, and it's, it's great. It's been great working with them. You know, we're using high quality meats, good spices, and the wood is probably the most important one, actually. So having good quality wood is 
crucial for cooking Texas barbecue. Is barbecuing easy? No. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, well, no, barbecue is definitely not easy. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to get to a place where you're confident in what you're doing. The idea of barbecue is easy. You're not doing a whole lot when you're smoking a brisket, you know? You do a little bit of work, but then you just wait for 12 hours. But it's like steering, you have to steer. It's like steering a, a flight, you know? You're steering a car through a whole trip, you know? So you have to know so much about what's going on. Like, there, it. I think the more challenging part about barbecue is the knowledge that you acquire through practice. You know what the meat looks like, you know how it's gonna feel like right now, you know how this is part is gonna dry out or not, or where to place the meat on the smoker. Um, it, it requires a lot of time, definitely, yeah. My name is Karim El Gaish. I am the pit master and owner of KG Barbecue and we use post oak wood from Chief Firewood.